friends, it's Christy. Welcome to day six of my 2021 holiday card series. Today I'm going to be making a card using Pink and Main's Empty Snow Globe and Winter Snow Globe Scenes. So I'm going to start with my stamping today. I'm using some Lawn Fawn Jet Black ink to stamp on some Spectrum Noir Ultra Smooth Premium White Cardstock. And I'm going to stamp that Empty Snow Globe image. I'm going to ink it up twice to make sure I have a really good impression. And then I'm going to take one of the images from the winter snow globe scenes. It's going to be this one with the Yeti and Rudolph, or the abominable snowman and Rudolph, or reindeer, whatever you want it to be. And I'm going to add that so that the mountains are just about touching the outer edges of that snow globe. I'm going to pick that up with the door of my Misty, and then I'm going to wipe it down really well with my Lawn Fawn Stamp Chamois. Sometimes when stamps come back from the manufacturers, they have a little bit of residue on them that makes the ink bead up, and then you don't get a really good impression. So wiping that off first just helps with that, and then I'm using my Twiddler's Nook Pressure Pal to help with the pressure to keep that nice and even. There's also like this little bubble image that comes with the empty snow globe and I'm going to stamp that down in the top left corner. I just thought that was a fun little detail. I haven't seen one of those in any other snow globe sets that I've uh, come across. So I just thought that was a nice touch. And now I'm going to jump into the coloring and I'm going to start with the background. I just find it easier to do that than to possibly drag some of the color that I might use on the mountains or the Yeti or the reindeer's antlers into the sky. So starting with that sky just um, helps eliminate any worries in that area. So I use BG Quadruple Zero and BG Zero Zero, and I did do a couple layers of that to build up that color. I did want to have a paler sky for this scene, but I definitely want there to be some color because I want to add some snow later on, and you won't see the white snow on a white background. So there does need to be a bit of shading in there. So I did add in the BG10 just to strengthen that color really on the horizon line, basically. So I'm using the side of my nib and doing that flicking motion so everything blends nice and smooth. And then I'll take the BG triple zero and add a little bit of shading to the bottom edge of those snow-capped mountains. And then I'm going to turn my cardstock so that I can flick in from either side and just add a bit of a frosty glow to the snow. I wanted to have a transition area from the mountains into the snow, so that kind of gives me a visual stopping point when I add the color for the mountains so I don't end up taking that color too far down. And it was looking a little too blue to me in comparison to the sky, so I added in BG10. That has a bit more of a green undertone to it, so it just kind of um, gives it that similar look to what I use for the sky. I decided to do the mountains in purple because I wanted everything to have that icy cold feel, but I didn't want to do gray. So I went with these really pale purples. I chose BV Quadruple Zero and BV01, and I'm shading up under the ice caps and then bringing that color down with the BV Quadruple Zero, which is so pale that it really just melts into that snow line. So I'm going to finish up this last one here. And where that mountain doesn't quite meet the edge of the snow globe, I'm just going to add the Copics in there. And then you really don't even notice it in the end. Also making sure to add that purple into the little space between the abominable snowman and Rudolph. And then to make that transition area even more seamless, I'll go back to that BG quadruple zero and just flick up from that snow line and the mountains kind of just melt into the snow then. You really don't see like a specific line, which is what I was going for. 
just use my colorless blender to push out the color in a couple little places where it went and I didn't want it and then I'm going to start coloring the blue parts of my abominable snowman so I'm using BG10, BG11 and BG13 for that so you could color him to be any kind of Yeti and the reindeer could be any kind of reindeer but Rudolph is my favorite childhood Christmas classic movie. I just adored that movie every year when it came on. I used to be terrified by the abominable snowman, and yet he is my favorite character in the film. So, um, yeah, I don't know. I just love him. So I'm just coloring him in with the BG-13 as my darkest, and then the BG-11 as the midtone, and the BG-10 for the highlight. And I made sure to do his little antlers or horns or whatever you want to call them. And then for the white parts of his body, I wanted to add just a little bit of shading to make him pop against those mountains. So I grabbed T0 and T1. And I used the T1 first to add a little bit of definition to the outer parts of his body or wherever a body part is overlapping another one. And then I'm going to go in with that T0 and just flick a little bit into that white space to smooth that out and help it transition. But I'm not going to cover up all of the white. I left some of it showing so that he does look white. And I even grabbed my colorless blender where I felt that the color went a little bit too far and just push that back. And then for Rudolph, I'm going to use E53, E55, and E57. Now there is a little space between his back legs and front legs. So that could be the background, but I didn't see his other leg. It's probably just hiding behind the other front leg. But I wanted there to be a fourth leg. I don't know, it's just something about my sense of balance there. So um, I just colored that space in between his legs as if that was where his other front leg was. So I used that E57 as the darkest and blended that out with the E55. I left a little white space on the underside of his tail and I'm also going to leave a little white space on the belly. So I'm going to stop before I get all the way down with that E53 and then blend out the rest of his face. And then for his hooves and the antlers, I'm going to use E57 and E59. So I used the E59 first and added some shading on the underside of the antlers and then to define each little section of it and then also on the back of the hooves and then I'll fill in the rest with the E57. And then I grab the E50 to transition into his belly and also add a little shading to his chest area. And for his nose, I went with my traditional red combo, which is R24, R29, and R39. And I blended with the shading on the right-hand side toward the left, which is how I did the whole rest of his body. And then I used the R24 for the bow on top of the gift. I used R20 to color in the Yeti's nose. And then I gave him some rosy cheeks and Rudolph one as well, even though it's such a small little space there. And then I blended that out with the R11. And then for the little gift, I'm going to use some green. I wanted to get some green in there somewhere because I wanted to match the pattern paper that I'll be using. So I went with G20, G24, and G28 and blended with the darkest at the bottom and the lightest at the top. And then I'm just gonna trim this image out with its matching die. Then I'm going to pop this into my Misty and I'm going to take the clear sheet uh, from the packaging of the Winter Snow Globe Scene stamp set and I'm going to use this to curve my sentiment so that it fits in that space below the snow globe. So it's going to stick to that plastic and that helps me be able to manipulate that. 
and I'll pick it up with the door of my Misty, remove the plastic and the stamp because, or the image I mean, because I'm not actually stamping on that. I want to stamp on this piece of craft cardstock from Lawn Fawn, and I'm going to do that using walnut ink. But that gave me the shape of it by using that stamped image so that I could line that up just how I wanted. And it's going to fit perfectly in the little die cut for that bottom area of the snow globe. So I'm going to stamp that down a couple of times to make sure I have a nice dark impression. This ink does dry back a little bit. I wanted it to be nice and bold. So I did stamp it down three times. So there you can see that. And then I'm going to pop my card base in my Misty so I can stamp on the inside. I'm using Lawn Fawn Mermaid cardstock because I thought that went well with the Yeti and the Sky. And I'm stamping another one of the images and a sentiment from Winter Snow Globe Scenes. It's this cute little penguin pair and enjoy the magic of the season. So then I'm going to choose some pattern paper from the crepe paper busy sidewalks six by eight i'm going to flip through until i find this sheet that i was thinking of these little trees with a little bit of gold foiling on them and then i also decided to take this red white and green stripe just to serve as a bit of a backdrop I trimmed both of those down with the Lawn Fawn Large Stitch Rectangle Stackables, and I'm going to adhere the striped pattern first. This one's going to fit over the entire card front. It's four and a quarter by five and a half, just like the standard size card that I'm attaching it to. And then the Christmas tree print I'm going to add, I trimmed that down to be a little bit smaller. So I would get a bit of that striped pattern at both the top and the bottom. And this pattern totally reminds me of the beginning of the movie where you see like all of the little Christmas trees and Sam the snowman comes up and starts telling you the story of Rudolph. Um, I just think it worked really well for this little scene. So I've glued my sentiment down at the bottom of that snow globe and I've added some foam tape to the back of that. So I'm going to pop that up in the center of my card, just making sure it's on there nice and straight before I press it down into place. And then I'm going to add some snow with this Dr. P.H. Martin's Bleed Proof White. I just got this in the mail and I wanted to try it out. And I also bought some little nail styluses to be able to tap that down. I will say that I realized that I did not shake that up well enough the first time. Um, I've since used this stuff on another card and it worked much better on that card um, because I shook the bottle up a lot firmer. So if you get this stuff, make sure that you shake it until it is like a fluid consistency. You can see in the bottle up there, it's really, really thick. But I'm just using the little bit that is in the lid and I'm dipping that stylus into the, the paint and then tapping it down at the bottom of my scene to add a little texture and then at the top of my scene and even over my images to add some snowfall. And I'm making sure to also add some over top of my little abominable snowman and Rudolph. I try to avoid the face, but you want to add some snowfall over top of them. Otherwise, it looks like it's only snowing behind them. And that's kind of weird. So um, just tapping some over them as well in little areas to, um, you know, show that that snow is coming down all around as it would be in a snow globe. And then I couldn't resist adding a little bit of glitter. So I grabbed my favorite Stardust Stickles and I'm going to add some to the snow capped tops of the mountains. So just kind of using the nozzle, squeezing that out a little bit and then dragging it around to fill up that space. Then I'm going to take some white glitter enamel dots. These are also from Pink and Main. And I'm going to add a little sprinkle of these to fill up the space in the top left corner and the bottom right corner. So I just picked like a large, a medium, and a small 
for the top and then I'm going to repeat that pattern down at the bottom corner. Again, just adding a bit of balance there. So um, I use the third one to just kind of bridge the gap between those two patterns of the pattern paper. And then I decided I had to have a little bit of glitter on Rudolph's nose and also put some on the gift. So I'll lift that up to the camera so you can see all of the detail and give you another peek at the inside. If you're watching this the day it goes live, this is part of an Instagram hop for Pink and Main, and there are four prizes of $25 of store credit each, so you'll want to head over and check that out. I'll have a link in the description bar as well as links to all of the products I used today in case you want to check those out. If you enjoyed the video, please be sure to hit that like button and subscribe. Ring that notification bell so you don't miss any future videos. If you'd like to keep watching, here is day six of the previous two years of Holiday Card Series. You can click on either one to check them out. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you have an amazing day. Bye-bye.